In this video, I'm gonna discuss a zeroth order dynamic system. So I'm gonna do first and second order systems later on. I'm gonna do a video about that. But before I start off uh, with this link here, you can download the files that I'm gonna use in this presentation. So if you wanna reproduce the problem that I'm gonna discuss here, you can just go to this link. And if you registered on GrabCat, you can download the model here and then you can reproduce it with SOLIDWORKS Premium only. So it doesn't work in the SOLIDWORKS Basics problem because you in the basics version because you need SOLIDWORKS Motion to reproduce this. So in this uh, this video I'm going to discuss a uh, zeroth order system. Here you see three of those systems. Uh, for example, when you consider a force on a spring, then the force is the distance that is uh, moved, the distance that is traveled, multiplied by the spring constant. So that's a zeroth order system. This is a zero zeroth order system as well. The force here is directly uh, directly proportional to the speed. So when you're considering force as an input and speed as an output, it's a linear system, but not if you're considering force as an input and displacement as an output, because then it's a, a first order system. And that goes for a mass as well. When you put a force on a mass, then it's a zeroth order system when considering the coupling of the force to the acceleration, but not when considering the force and the displacement as an output because then it's a second order system. So in this video I'm gonna just look at zeroth order system and in this case this is a zeroth order system because the force is directly proportional to the distance that is traveled in the x direction. And I've discussed that uh, this in the, this first sheet already as well so here it's it's written down what I've what I've stated there. And here goes the same. So now when you do a, a, a transfer function, so when you go to the frequency domain, in this case for a zeroth order system it's, it's very simple. So simple that many people consider a zeroth order system not to be a dynamic system. So that's why you won't find many videos on it. Here you see the, the transfer function. The force is the spring constant k multiplied by the distance traveled x. So the transfer function is then output divided by input, so it's the output is the displacement, the input is the force, and that that makes up the transfer function, which is one divided by spring constant k. So in my, in my problem, I'm gonna use a spring constant of 500. So my transfer function is simple, one divided by 500, and I'm, I can see that when I switch over to SolidWorks. Here I've got this problem, Here you see the force is 10 Newton and then the frequency that I use in this case is 1 Hertz, so I've, I've created a spring, so once more you can download the, the model. So here you see the, the harmonic in the force and when I look at the spring you'll see it's a, a spring constant of 500 Newton per meter. And here I've written down the mass here is uh, roughly equal to zero. You can't, you cannot put it at completely zero in SolidWorks, so I've put it at uh, almost zero. Uh, and then you can still consider this as a zeroth order problem. So now if I, I run this simulation, and I can show the spring over here. This goes a bit fast. I'll, I'll run it at lower speed, for example, a quarter of the speed and then rerun it again. So if I press the spring, it shows it here in the window. And when it's red, it's a, a compressive force in the spring. And when it's gray, it's a tensile force in the spring. And now you see here that the this is the, the force. I've plotted the reaction force, which is also the input force in this situation. It's 10 Newton. And the displacement is 0 0.02 millimeter. So no, no matter what the frequency will be, that will be the case. So the the force is 10 Newton and the displacement is 0 0.02 meter, so 20 millimeter. So here you see it done for a frequency of 1 hertz. So you see here, at 1 second it's done one complete revol revolution. So when I change it here, for example, the force, and make it a, a lower frequency, or for example 0 0.5 Hertz then it will be the same the the maximum displacement will still be 
0.02 and the, the force will still be maximum of 10 newton so that's that's the situation of a zeroth order system so I can I can show you I'll enter this force here and then I'll recalculate this problem and then at the end of the calculation SOLIDWORKS simulation will show me the graphs again so it's, a, it's recalculating right now so for this you do need SOLIDWORKS motion as you see here and now you see here the the time now before one revolution is done is two seconds but the output is still the same the the maximum force here is 10 newton and the maximum displacement is still 0 0.02 millimeter and that's a zeroth order system and that's also what you see in this graph over here so this is uh, this is the the transfer function that I can plot in MATLAB so I'll just do that I'll go to MATLAB and then I'll enter the commands that I've just shown on the screen so first I enter the transfer function MATLAB shows me a static gain of 1 divided by 500 so 0 0.002 and then I can go to the frequency domain by doing the LTI view command so it's the Laplace transfer interactive view command I'll import the graph and now I get the, the response on a step function so I don't want to see that I want to go to the frequency domain to a Bode plot and now I see here the magnitude in decibels so that it's not my preferred view so I'm gonna change it by double clicking it over here and take the units as absolute and the scale linear and the limits I want to have the limits from maximum of 0 0.01 uh, minus uh, let me see oh, should have changed it over here so minus 0 0.01 to 0 0.01 alright and now I see here that the value is 0 0.02 of the magnitude and the phase change is absolute zero and that's what I can see in SOLIDWORKS as well you see here this one starts at zero seconds and this one starts at zero seconds as well so there's there's no phase change and it will never be a phase change for this situation because that's uh, one of the properties of a zero order system so that's uh, that's what I wanted to show you as mentioned before you can download the model on Gra GrabCat for free and experiment with it and what, what, you've, what you've seen here in this plot is no matter what the frequency is uh, if the frequency is low or if it's high if it's uh, for example 1 hertz 1 revolution per second or 10 revolutions per second the output will always be 0 0.02 so here in SOLIDWORKS I've used the force of 10 Newton 10 times 0 0.002 is, uh, is 1 divided by 500 is 0 0.02 so, yeah, as you can see here so um, if the force would have been 1 the output here would have been a factor 10 less and that's what I want to tell about the 0th order system and later on I'll make the videos on the 1st and 2nd order systems thanks for watching